Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and this morning I woke up to uh, someone linking me some set of challenges that uh, Jerry Ward issued me. And uh, you know what, guys, I'm not going to make any sort of smart ass reply back to him about um, what challenges I would challenge him to because it's just silly. This stuff gets ridiculous at a certain point here on YouTube. And Jerry, I want to state. Please do not try to take up my crafting like I do because if the drug cycle you sent me and I posted for everyone with your shotgun approach of just as much as you could put in your body, uh, you know, you'll probably go build an AR-15, a really nice one, or pay someone else to build it for you, uh, fill a 5.56 NATO cartridge all the way up with bullseye, compress it down, crimp it down, and explode your gun on the first shot. Uh, because again, Jerry, you know, more is not always better. So uh, let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing. Do a little bit of crafting here. And uh, let's talk about this for a minute. You know what? All these people always want to challenge me to stuff. What's with other YouTubers, fitness YouTubers, wanting to issue challenges to me? Guys, you know the only challenge we as fitness YouTubers need to be issuing to each other is to see who can put out the best information that helps the most people. That should be what we're focused on. Helping people, giving people good information, maybe entertaining them a little bit on the way, but helping people with their fitness. That's our challenge. That's something I challenge you to, Jerry. That's something I challenge everyone else in this community to. Why don't we see who can give the best, most quality information to people? That's our job. That's what we're getting paid to do here. That's why people watch, hopefully. We're helping them. Helping them reach their goals. I would hope. And uh, you know what scares me is that his initial challenge there that he feels so good about is really scary because it's about, seems to be about everyone's obsessed in this community with destroying their health. You know, no matter how many experts put out data, no matter how much blood work and stuff we look at showing that getting ripped is insanely dangerous for your health, it's bad for your health, it could, you know, it hurts you. Um, people just continue to focus and obsess on it and call it fitness. Guys, yeah, there's nothing fitness related about getting ripped. As a male, a healthy male, you really shouldn't be going under about 10% body fat uh, without a medical doctor being involved. In fact, in a lot of contact uh, sports in college, you're going to find that going down under 10% body fat, they're going to want to have doctors there at the university look at you if you start coming back that low. And in many of them, they won't even let you compete when you go under 8%. Um, there are many universities over the years for decades now that have had policies on that. They won't let you compete in anything where another athlete might make contact with you because you're scared it's going to damage your organs if you get hit. So that includes everything from football to wrestling to boxing. So points to consider there, guys. Getting ripped uh, hurts your health. And, you know, experts know and have known for a long time that it also means that you could die just from an impact. You can get organ damage just from being hit or punched once you get that lane. It's not a good thing. Uh, and, you know, the health perspective. Everyone's so obsessed with this manorexia. This getting lean, and it, people always want to challenge me to getting ripped, guys, again, like Jerry Ward did. Why would anybody want to do that? Why would someone who's concerned with their health and fitness want to bring their body fat levels down so low that they might have to go on TRT the rest of their life? Uh, because remember that? We've even had at least uh, Mark Lobliner talking about that, that one of his clients that is another coach messed up. And um, that coach happened to be with the 3 um, DJ or whatever they're called, by the way. I'm not going to say which coach. Uh, they got him his diet wrong, uh, they ran his dietary fat too low, dieted him down lean, and he had to go on testosterone replacement therapy for it. Not because he used drugs or anything else, but he simply dieted down too hard and it shut down his testicles. And now the guy doesn't produce enough testosterone. Stop and think about that for a minute, all you guys out there. Getting ripped is purely a drug game. It's not something naturals need to be doing, and the reason it crashes your testosterone. Look at the blood work that Eric Helms did in his study. Um, all that study he did getting his PhD studying uh, natural pre-contest bodybuilders and looking at their protein intakes, he did such a fantastic job of it that they did blood work on everyone, right? Their blood works looked terrible. When these guys went down lean, got well under 10% body fat, they got ripped. Their testosterone levels looked like that of 70-year-old men. Their thyroid levels crashed. They have all sorts of their terrible hormone profile. You know, people talk about obesity being unhealthy, and it is a bigger problem. Obesity is a massive health epidemic. And people kind of get mad, and they're like, why do you always rag on the getting ripped when more people are obese and this is a bigger problem? And I agree with you, but here's the difference. 
Everyone in the fitness world already knows that being morbidly obese kills people. They already are trying to do something about it. They're not at risk. People who are watching fitness YouTube channels are not at risk of being sedentary and being obese. Many of them, though, because of the community, are at risk of falling into the trap of thinking it's a good idea or healthy to get too lean or too ripped. The target audience here in this community is at risk for falling for that because it's pushed all the time. How many fitness YouTubers out here are pushing that, trying to get ripped themselves, getting too cut up, too lean, and then promoting it as if it's a healthy fit activity or the pinnacle of fitness, when the reality is, if you look at the blood work on it, someone who's walking around at 6 or 7% body fat as a male, you go look at their blood work, and then you look at someone who's, say, 50 pounds overweight, and uh, you tell me who's unhealthier. You go pull the blood work of 20 people from each group and have a doctor look at them and say, well, who's, who's at more risk here? Who's got the most potential health problems? The doctor might shrug and go, all of them. You know, and it's being promoted as health and fitness. And uh, it's really scary that it's pushed so hard because of that, this whole manorexia thing. And that's what it is. It's about anorexia because anyone who is drug-free who gets that lean, they look like an anorexic almost when they're done. They look flat. They look emaciated, stringy. Uh, they've basically just become anorexic who lift a lot of weights. All the guys who get really ripped that way who are on drugs, they look bigger and fuller, and that fits many people's idea of what fitness is. But the only reason they've maintained muscle mass through all that starvation is because of the drugs. The only reason they're not suffering low testosterone is because they're putting exogenous testosterone back into their body. Uh, and remember John Hollywood back before he had some issues, and I haven't heard from him, and I've heard, again, rumors. I'm not going to go into that as to what's going on with his health um, and what has happened to him. Uh, he's not doing well. But he used to even say, and again, this is someone who was actually a, I believe he was a psychiatrist by trade, who also happened to do bodybuilding prep. Even he did it, but he always told people bodybuilding has nothing to do with health. Getting ripped has nothing to do with health. And he goes, and even though drugs present their own health problems, he's like, in my opinion, it is even worse for the health for a natural to get contest lane than it is for someone on drugs. And that was his professional opinion. Actually having a, you know, his psychiatry degree required a large amount of biology and it required some medical school and stuff to get there. And in his opinion, uh, the guys doing it drug-free were even at more risk than the people on drugs were, that it was even more unhealthy, even though he wouldn't recommend it to either group if they wanted to be healthy, that contest prep was inherently an unhealthy activity. But he feared more for the drug-free guys, even though he still coached them. He let them know, this is going to harm you. You know, um, this is going to be harmful to you. This is not going to be a good thing. But uh, people do it anyways, and we parade it around as fitness. And I'm the first person to say, hey, you have a right to do with your body as you want. I'm for freedom. I don't believe in restricting people's freedoms of what they can do to themselves. Um, I believe in restricting what you can do to other people. But as far as your personal freedoms, uh, your body, uh, you should be able to do with it as you please. I agree with that. But by that same token, when you're running around promoting and glorifying an unhealthy activity like being ripped, it's a problem. And this community is bad about it. This is just as bad of a message as the people promoting fat acceptance. And that's the difference. You know, everyone wants to do everything in hyperbole. They always want to talk about, well, you know, if you're not promoting being ripped, you must be promoting fat acceptance. No, how about we promote people being, in, you know, in the healthy body fat range? Why don't we promote that instead? Why can't we promote health? Why can't we promote fitness instead of these two extremes? You know, because fat acceptance is bad. Uh, and being too ripped is bad. Why don't we pick a middle ground? Why don't we keep people in the normal healthy body fat range and have them lift weights and do cardio and eat plenty of uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, plenty of fiber and whole foods? Why don't we promote that instead? How about that? How's, how about that as a better solution than people running around promoting both people being too ripped and emaciated and people running around promoting fat acceptance? Let's, let's actually promote health and fitness for a change. Wouldn't that be nice? <clears throat> I mean, how nice would that be if the fitness world on YouTube could actually do that just for a little while, maybe for just six months? We don't have to do it all the time. Maybe we just try six months where we promote being actually fit and healthy. People be in the normal fat range, lift weights, do cardio, and eat, eat healthy foods. You would be in competition then. You're the only person actually. Oh, I'm the only, only one actually promoting that? Okay. Yeah, well, there, there's some others out there. Competition, maybe? You 
Okay. Well, no, that's what I did. I mean, Jerry issued a challenge to me, and I issued a challenge to him saying, right, why don't we see who can put out the best information? That should be the only challenge anyone does on YouTube Fitness. How about he put down the pink barbells and, like, and dumbbells and while we could lift some real weight like a power lifter? Then he not even lift? Like, then he lift super, like, Yeah, he lifts little lightweights for partials. I've outlifted him already. Yeah. He wants to compete with you. Oh, there you go, Jerry. There's a, there's a challenge for you. My girlfriend wants to challenge you to a powerlifting meet. Because I don't have time for these challenges. I'm busy trying to put out good information, but she'll challenge you to a powerlifting meet. I'll kick his ass. My girlfriend will. And if you want to do a drug tested one, we can do that too. Well, that was a good interruption. That wasn't expected. So where was I going with that? No, I disagree. I think everyone needs to be promoting health and fitness. If we're going to call it fitness, or you're going to have fitness in your tags, or you're going to have fitness in the name of your channel, and talk about fitness, then you need to be promoting fitness. So why all these other YouTubers always want to issue challenges to me, uh, I really don't know. Like I said before, the only challenge I'm willing to accept and issue back to them is the only one that matters. How about let's have a contest to see who can put out the best, highest quality information that's actually useful to people and helps them. How's that for a challenge? I challenge Jerry Ward to that, and I challenge every single other fitness YouTuber to that exact same challenge. Let's have a contest to see who can actually put out the best and most helpful and useful and correct information. Challenge accepted, and I'm pretty sure I'm winning that one already. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.